Hello, and welcome to Traditional Stitches Floss Do video number 17. I'm Janice Spencer, the owner of Traditional Stitches, and with me is our Stitch Along leader, Rose Heck. Good morning, everyone. Hi, morning. Rose. How are, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. <laughs> We're recording on the morning of Saturday, February 26th, um, and so nice way to start our Saturday and um, get this up and published as soon as we can. So uh, we have quite a few things that we want to talk about today. Uh, we're gonna start with the new traditional stitches exclusive designs from Jeanette Douglas. And then uh, we'll talk about both of our ongoing uh, stitch alongs with Hands Across the Sea samplers. And then we're going to uh, do our top five lists, each of us, of the uh, upcoming Nashville Needlework Market releases. And then we'll just talk a little bit about what we're working on and our plans. So, Sounds good. So in our last video, we showed our newest uh, 20th anniversary exclusive design uh, from Jeanette Douglas that's been in the works for quite a long time. And we finally came together at a time when we can give it its due. So it's this design of four smalls. There's actually five charts in the chart pack. And um, with all kinds of options for personalizing and customizing as suits you. So it was originally designed for our 20th anniversary in 2020. So it's got those dates on that. But then Jeanette, cleverly, she's just, I enjoy spending time with her because the ideas and the way that she sees things, is just so special. Um, so then she made some adaptation motifs that could go in and take place of the dates. So lots of choices and options there. Mm -hmm. And also you can stitch it on whatever count of fabric you're comfortable with. We're offering it with 32, 36, and 40 count linens, but it, there's no reason why these guys can't be stitched on Ada as well. Mm. So I'm just gonna do a quick show of each one. And Rose, if you have any questions or anything about them, just let okay. me know. So this one was stitched on 32 count linen uh, using two strands of floss. And it is finished with Velveteen from Lady Dot Creates on the back and Schneel from Lady Dot Creates on the side. And this one was on 40 count linen, uh, again with the Velveteen on the back, silk ribbon on the edge that's tacked down with little matching beads. And then in these needle rolls, this one, this taller one has an extra border on the bottom and the top so that it's just a little bit better of a drum kind of a size. And then this one is so much fun. It's like a little sausage, but this little feature on the edge that has the uh, buttons and then the lacing, that's so much fun. Yes. And then buttons on the end. So the one thing that I wanted to point out is these designs are mostly cross stitch over two, um, but you could choose to do, let's see if we can tell. This motif here is cross stitch over one for the T and the S for traditional stitches. And this version is cross stitch over two for those that don't like over one. So lots of uh, choices. Um, so the chart includes enough thread to do two versions and um, also the silk ribbon and the beads for finishing. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we've added the option and I've actually been really surprised by the number of people who have chosen it to add on additional thread packs to stitch them all. So wouldn't that be a fun little like bowl filler kind of a display? of these colors since they work, they're just so pretty together. And you have lots of choices of changing motifs a little bit and adding your own twist, whatever that is. Question for you, does it come with the 
how to make the drum or do the ruching? Does it give you the instructions? It includes all of the finishing instructions. Oh, good. Yeah, so attaching the trims and um, this one, the border is an unstitched border. So there's mm -hmm. stitch instructions on how to do that. And then as well as finishing it off this way. So, and um, Jeanette has uh, Mona do her finishing and finishing instructions. And oh. so many of you will have been familiar with Mona's work with Jeanette's previous designs. So mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's what's included there. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think I purchased the kit based on that little sampler roll, the red one with the lacing on the back, the corset lacing. Yeah. That one spoke to me. I love that. Spools are hard to find and this is the most creative, genius idea. I'm, I'm sure she woke up at two o'clock in the morning and went, oh, I think that would be a great idea. I, I don't know, Jeanette, don't ignore that. But yeah, I think it's great. Good. Uh, and um, we, I spoke with Jeanette in our last FOSS tube video mm -hmm. where she explained the design process and some of the reasons why this is coming out in our 22nd yeah. year instead of our 20th year. But so uh, if you want to see more information about those projects, just watch our FOSS tube video number 16. Yeah. So that design series is limited edition, exclusive to traditional stitches. Mm -hmm. And um, we will begin shipping those at the end of March. Okay. <laughs> so then the next thing we want to talk about is our uh, Hands Across the Sea samplers, Eliza Martha Linfoot stitch one. Correct. Just grabbing it here. <clears throat> okay. I'm just going to pull up the monthly layout that Krista Gramer, I think it's Krista, that has done for, no, Sherry. It's Sherry, yeah. Correct. And here is the layout, and so we are month, month number six. Correct. That is going to be the urn of flowers with the yellow satin stitch centers, the red flowers, and the one of the deers, and a bit of the border. Right. Okay. So I'll show you what I've completed so far. Mm. So there she is. Month four was that right side urn and the flowers that go straight up. So very symmetrical. Okay. And then six, of course, is gonna be one half of the symmetry. Mm -hmm. So. Well, wow. I'm going to show you mine. Um, I am in love with this sampler. Once I picked it up and once I started it, yeah. I didn't want to stitch on anything else. And so I don't, I'm not a rotation person, but if something is feeling good and going well, then I'll stick with it until it isn't. So I kind of have zipped ahead. Oh, good. And oh my goodness. Good yeah. for you. Oh, that's beautiful. Look Thanks. at you. So the section that we're going to be doing this month's stitch along is this urn and then the stag that goes underneath him. And the yeah. interesting part about this section <laughs> is that in the middle of these red flowers is supposed to be yellow rays of satin mm -hmm. stitch. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about that a little bit earlier and you said you already had a question via Facebook about somebody who wanted to know how to tackle that. Yes, she was struggling with it and she showed me some pictures of it and she was starting out really well and it was looking good and I think you need to follow it on the diagram that Nicola has for us and I think if you come back around again start again filling in those spots that you may want and that is the key to fall to 
doing it and making it look fuller. Now, if you're happy with going one round and you like the, I don't want to call it sparseness, but just that a little more open look, leave it. It is your project and you do what you want. But don't get into the idea that you should maybe thread your needle with two threads and fill it in because it will, it won't lay right. And I think this is where some people might have a problem with it. So go around once and it's kind of like a raised stitch where your center is, you're working off of a center and you're splaying out each stitch three times and then move to the next spot. So really follow, follow the diagram. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I think you're exactly right that it is going to end up being a matter of personal preference and how heavily you want that <laughs> stitched. So, um, and also a little bit about the thread that you're using too. Um, so you and I are both stitching with the Swell 100 over three on the 45 count linen, and it might fill up really fast or it might look sparse, but people who are using Swell d'Alger, that is gonna look really plush and lush just with the rays that are in there, I think. And I'm not quite sure about the DMC, but, um, I think you should all do exactly what Rose said, where you do one pass all the way around and then maybe just fill in some areas that look a little bit thin to you. The good thing about satin stitch is that it's not that bad to unpick if you put in something that you don't really like. Correct. Yeah, yeah I agree with you there. Hmm. So I'm kind of strategizing ahead on this basket. I know it's not part yeah. of what we're talking about yet, but the original version, the dark lines in the basket are um, stem stitch, and mm -hmm. then the white is filled in with satin stitch. So I'm kind of thinking that I want to get all of my stitching done and then take this out of the frame to do the stem stitch outline because stem stitch goes really well with the sewing method. Because you're I kind agree. of going going back on the stitch that you just did. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking about doing that. So. Interesting. You know. I haven't quite gotten my head into that part yet. <laughs> um, and I've got some time to think about it. Yeah. But I like that idea. So who knows? Yeah, and we'll see how it goes. I'll report back. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So, and if anybody else has something different, you know, please mention it on on the Eliza Martha Linfoot's Stitch Along Facebook page or anywhere else that, you know, we're all learning from each other too, so. Yeah. Yep. So, and the Stitch Along for this started on Facebook on October 1st of last year. I've done the progress that I've done, which it's almost done, um, since the week between Christmas and New Year's. Oh, so cool. if somebody was thinking that they couldn't catch up, you totally could catch up with the Stitch Along group. And um, there, it's such a great resource for people who have stitched ahead. Then you see their notes and you can watch their progress and ask questions and everything. So that's... <laughs> That's really great. And so this stitch along was offered exclusively from four shops and hands across the sea samplers. And we're proud to have been one of those four shops. And we do still have supplies available, including the acrylic accessories. We showed off our needle minders on our samplers mm -hmm. that were made by Kathy Ray of Needle in a Haystack. So mm -hmm. all of that is still available and anybody is welcome to join us. Good. I am not working ahead, <laughs> which is really unusual for me. I have four stitch alongs <clears throat> that I'm doing, plus my own other, and it's, I could, I could, and there's times it's like, oh, I wanna keep on going, but well, we're trying something different this year. So, okay. We'll see. So speaking of which, let's talk about Esther Blackwood, which is the stitch along Blackwood. that you are leading and you have to keep pace on. <laughs> yeah, yes, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody knows what Esther looks like. 
Uh, and sorry, I don't mean to pull it away quickly. I'm going to show our month that we're on. So we're on month three. So going into got, month three. Correct. So we've got a little bit of the border. We have this flower vase urn with leaves and we have the fuchsia. Janice and I were talking earlier and I was looking at the chart I mentioned to her yesterday and I realized <clears throat> how intense this, um, it's not a border, dividing, dividing band, correct, it is. There is a lot of color changes and then this motif in six, there is a lot of color changes and it's full cross stitch. So I think my intention going ahead is I am planning to do three, month three, and I'm going to do this dividing band below. And then month four, I'm going to do the next two motifs and do the dividing band below. And then same with five. So by the time I get to six, I will have had that dividing band done. Having said that, if I find that, that dividing band is taking me too long, I'll maybe leave for the next month. Um, so three, four, five, and six may get all jumbled together a bit. So I'll show you month two and my progress thus far. A lot of fabric here. So here is my progress. Sorry ah, for so the. Pretty. It is pretty. Uh, a lot of people were kind of concerned about that dividing band, and there's six different colors and the changing of it. I, I'm trying to remember how I did this. I think we discussed it the last time and I picked the color that there was the most of and I worked it across. I didn't stop and then continue. Um, I had I had the um, landmarking of the band across. So this one, the strawberry and the three motifs. So mm -hmm. it actually worked really well. I had no problems moving ahead with that. Everybody does a different thing, but it was enjoyable to work. So that's how I'm going to progress in the next month. All right, well, we've got a plan then. Mine still looks the same as it did the last time I showed it. I haven't, obviously I've been distracted by the Linfoot sampler, so I haven't been back to this one, but that's what it looks like. Looks good. It's fun. And I was not planning on stitching this project in hand, but it has turned out to be a really good choice for that, for a little bit of portability. And so it's a little bit scrunchy, but it's working. What really are well. you working on for linen? Is it 40? Count? Yeah, for, 40 oh. with the swat LJ. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think I, mine is, sorry. The I'm doing a lot of sewing um, as opposed to poke and stab because I'm doing it in hand, which means that it's going pretty quickly when I do work on it. I still put mine in the stand, so it's personal preference. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got new stands into the shop. So they're not new to the whole market or anything, but they're new to us. And that is that I ordered in a bunch of Lowry stands straight from the UK. And I'm finding that to be a very, very handy little floor stand. Oh, okay. Uh, a nice additional combination of they have um, a needlework system for floor stand, which I really like. But this one has, um, it's, it's really good, small scale, small space setup. And um, last fall, I moved from a 3000 square foot house to a 920 square foot condo. So things that are small and easy, easier to are really good. So I'm really happy with those stands and we've got a new shipment coming from the UK that should be here next week. So if anybody has any questions about those, I'm now experienced with them and I'm happy to talk about it. That's cool. Yeah. 
So then uh, the next thing that we have to talk about is Nashville. So uh, Kim, who works for me in the shop, and I are leaving on Thursday to spend all day traveling to Nashville to attend the Nashville Needlework Market. And so we've got all of our testing appointments made and um, kind of the logistics of that fit into our four-day weekend. And now I'm really excited and I can't wait. I bet. So we've got almost 300 items added to our Nashville preview section, and there is a lot more to come. Um, so in the next few days, there will be, we should finish it off for the most part. Um, so advance orders are welcome and recommended. We have already heard of several things that have sold out in the pre-ordering process. So, um, we're just hoping that the designers will be able to ship them to us after the fact, but we'll figure that out as we go. And um, there's lots of things where the designers aren't taking pre-orders, so it'll be standing in line and um, waiting not so patiently for our turn to get them and hope that we get them. So it's a little bit of a gamble, but... I can, I, I can only imagine. Some people have asked us to bring back some hand-dyed fabric, specific cuts and colors of hand-dyed fabric for them. And um, the way that the demand, I, I could just see people in there with their elbows trying to get to that fabric and just buying up whatever they could grab. So we might focus our attention somewhere else. Yeah, I may have been one of them. I, I hadn't yet, but I know from years past what you have said about hand-dyed fabrics and what other people have said, it'll be a jostling nightmare and it might yeah. not be the time. So we'll do what we can, but. Right, right. That's <laughs> I right. come home with bumps and bruises, you'll know I ventured into a fabric room. <laughs> Just bigger boxing gloves. Oh. To take up precious suitcase space though. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> bubble wrap I don't know so It'll you and I have talked a little bit over the last week about um, we wanted to as part of this video feature our uh, top choices of the previews that we've seen for Nashville <laughs> and um, the the range of designs and the quality of designs is outstanding this year and so when I said K Rose, I know we had talked about a top 10 list, but this video can't go on for two hours. So we just need to talk about our top fives. And you were like, um, only five? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've got a list in front of me and I've X'd off the ones that I, I it, it's really tough. It really, and you're right, the quality of designs this year just blows my mind. And so I've squeaked it down to six, hoping that one of them is one that is on your list, one or two, and then I don't have to. Um, but I do have two, one, two, I don't know, that are absolutely outstanding. That So we'll see. Okay. I'll try to behave. Okay, so truth be told, I have six on my list too. So. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay. Well, then hopefully we have duplicates. Okay, so where do you want to start? You go first. Um, I'm wondering if I should go with, oh gosh, I'm going to just start at the top. And I have down from the Scarlet House, Philadelphia Fine, Vine, 1755. Okay, that's one off my list. <laughs> okay, I figured that. Yeah, so I'm going to, as we talk about each design, I'm going to insert the full cover photo that the designers provided with us into the video. Um, but I'm just gonna pull that up on my iPad here because I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, of course I have to be able to spell it. <laughs> 
Yes, I keep on wanting to say Philadelphia fine, and it is yeah. fine, but it is fine. This just has all the samplery things. Like it's got a really awesome border. It has alphabets. It has um, a band and verse. So be you to others kind and true as you'd have others be to you. And neither do or say to men whatever you would not take again. So I'll insert a picture of the sampler here. And it's what just is that? Yeah. So um, Philadelphia Vine wrought this in 1755 in the 10th year of her age which is, again, an example of how it is astounding that those young schoolgirls were doing such amazing work, but, yeah. I know. It has all the quirkiness because her word, again, she didn't have room for the N, so she tucked it at the top. Because it is pre, oh, what year did the alphabet have, was different, pre-1800, it has those S's that look like F, which I really like. There's not much over one. It has that undulating dividing band with the carnations closer to the top. The colors are delicious. It's just, it's beautiful. There's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing I can say wrong about it. Well, and so the, the colors in this are really eye-catching, but there's only six colors. And Amazing. the model was stitched with hand-dyed silk, a combination of dinky dyes and Gloriana. Um, so, yeah, that's really great. That would be a DMC conversion included, but the effect of the silk will just be beautiful. Okay, what's number two? Hmm. Number two, and, and I, I've seen the video on this one. So this is why I have this on. It's called Pink Cottage School from Hello from Liz Matthews. I watched her video with her mom a week ago. She had it on there. And this is an adaptation of an original antique sampler, but she has included the original script on there over one. And that is the one that called to me. I tend to be a bit of a purist and I liked that original over one. So, and I, the colors are a little more muted. And the border is very organic, leaves and small flowers. And it has the large butterflies it, and birds. It, it just, it pleased me. I thought it was quite sweet. So that's my number two. Okay. Well, and I'll insert a picture of that here. And in the picture, you'll see that at the bottom of it, there is a small pin cushion and taken uh, kind of inspirational from that top motif with the, are they doves at the top? Anyways, um, that you could, that's included in the chart. I'm not sure the what they are. Yeah, on either side of the basket. Nice. Yeah. And it's not, it looks symmetrical, but it isn't fully symmetrical. The butterflies are different colors. The house with the trees and that could be a standalone itself for a little pin keep also. It's, I, I just like it. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's number three? I have it on here. Hannah Harding, 1832 by Queenstown Sampler Designs. Yes. And she has a number that are really nice, but this one, I think it's a Philadelphia Quaker, no, Pennsylvania Quaker. Anyhow, I, if there is a little more satin stitch and I think stem stitch there is 
uh, it's a little greater, a little more advanced piece, although a confident beginner could do it. But I just liked the whole layout. I thought it was very pretty and it flowed. It wasn't, there's no symmetry to it. Um, there again, it has butterflies, birds, morning glory, squirrels, funky basket. What's not to like? Yeah, it is a very pretty sampler and I'll insert a picture of it here. And it has been one of our most popular samplers for the mm -hmm. pre-orders for market. And um, Barbara knocked it out of the park from Queenstown samplers with nine beautiful reproduction samplers this time. And um, one of her other designs is on my top list. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. Oh, cool. Yeah. cool. Okay. The next one I have uh, is a newer designer, Little Robin Designs. And I see you've started taking her on to your website. And it's called the Charming Cow Sampler. And she's a fairly bright sampler. And she is a marking sampler with some very neat dividing bands. But down below on this piece of grass, you have a white cow. And I guess I like cows. I, you know, grew up also in a city, but I was always in the country on people's farms. So this one I thought was just really charming. Yes, and so I'll insert a picture of that here as well. And it is the lovely little schoolgirl sampler and at the very bottom it says, in love be always true, 1837. So definitely worth having that. I mean, that could be a fun wedding sampler with that saying. Oh, you know, yeah. Put your statistics at the bottom and saying, you know, such and such and the date type of thing. Um, it would be yeah. fun. Yeah, that's a really good point because it would be so easy to add another, the way that the sampler sex, sectioned off into bands, you could totally easily either insert a band further up or put something yes. on the bottom. Yeah. Yes. Good idea. Okay. My next one, and I, this is Fox and Rabbit. And Fox and Rabbit have three that they're coming. And I had a tough time deciding which one I liked more. So even though I'm going to showcase this one, trust me, the other two are in the same level. And I'm laughing because it, I picked Margaret Felicia Dyson. Dyson. And I realized I must be attracted to those diamond colored baskets because, which was the last one that had that? The Charming Cow Sampler, nope. The one from Queenstown Sampler, Hannah Harding, has that similar basket, that diamond quilted basket with the multicolors. So I must have something, some quirky thing that I really like that. Oh, she has pancake, you. yeah, it, she has um, kind of a honeysuckle border which I, it's a little bit different, it's fuller. Pancake flowers, floral crowns. It's asymmetrical again, it's pretty, and, and a lot of red. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that'd be fun to stitch for sure. Yeah. I really like those big oversized kind of primitive flowers. I do too. So here is a picture for everybody to see what it is that we're talking about. All right. My last one is probably my most favorite of everything. And I was scrolling through Facebook this morning and this designer had close up pictures and that put me over the edge. So it's Needlework Press. It's Anne Mac Janet. And when I looked at it, I thought it is beautiful. 
and I love the border and the stags or hearts. I love the dividing bands, the floral motifs with the bees. This reminds me a little bit of a companion piece to Sarah Brazier from Hands Across the Sea Sampler, okay. which I did four years ago. But you need to look at Vicky's close-up pictures to appreciate this. Her border flowers are satin stitch. Oh. Each petal is satin stitched. So this, mm. this piece is, uh, it's drop dead gorgeous. She, she hit it out of the park with this. Having said that, a disclaimer, everybody hit it out of the park with their pieces. Mm -hmm. So those uh, are- I'll, I'll include good. a big picture of that. And then I'm sure Vicki will forgive me if I steal the close up off of Instagram to and put that in here, just so that everybody can see what it is that you're talking about. Do. Okay, those are mine. Okay, um, so mine, starting at the top, the ones that we didn't duplicate, is uh, Needle Maid's Rebecca Stewart. Okay. And this has been, um, a, we've seen it before. It was probably an exclusive somewhere, um, but it is just the perfect, little motif sampler and I say little and it's not little because it's 229 by 320 so it's, <laughs> it's a good size um, but it's full of floral motifs so um, and I really like that kind of stitching because every time you finish one motif it feels like it's an accomplishment. I saw this one this morning and I, I've probably seen it before but I saw it with different eyes this morning and do you know, it reminds me of the floral motif sampler that the Scarlet House put out last year, I believe. And, and I thought it'd be a great companion piece. Yeah. So it's really pretty. It's got some pale blues in there and the, the good red. And yeah, mm. so that is on my list. Um, the, another one, the next one is Brenda Gervais, uh, Rejoice Evermore. So this that was is one. a quintessential Brenda Gervais sampler. Mm -hmm. So it's got her colors and a border and a red house, which who doesn't need a, another red house sampler and <laughs> the pretty bluebirds. So, mm -hmm. and certainly yes. Brenda's. Uh, charts have been amongst the top of our advanced order lists as well. This is, this is a piece that I really do like to, and looking at it again, and I've been typing in just to look at what you're looking at so I can follow along. She, it is an original sampler, but there is a lot of pieces that she, um, influenced from original antique samplers, like that undulating border and that be, or dividing band, pardon me, and the border, the strawberry border, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's beautiful and it just appeals to me as something that would be really fun to stitch, enjoyable stitch. So that's on my list. Oh. And then um, the Queenstown sampler one that I had talked about liking is a Nashville exclusive. So only shops that are attending Nashville will get to pick up this chart. And it is called Ruth. And it is the super Berlin. I'm even going to hold this up on my iPad. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. So Berlin, Woolworky, Pictorial, 
um, very solidly stitched. Um, it's it's yes. just stunning. And it calls for 45 different colors of thread. So the shading and the just the beauty of it is going to be outstanding. Mm -hmm. So just the girl and her spaniel and very unique. Very much so. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is Teresa Kogut. Uh, mm -hmm. She published her designs for the most part in books this year. So mm -hmm. you get between three and eight patterns in each of the books. And the mm -hmm. one that I really like is the Let Love Rain. Um, On my list. Yeah, so the Let Love Rain design in the Let Love Rain book. So I'll show you this because it's just easier. So this is the cover shot that she's showing of it. And then we also have a picture of the full sampler on our website, which is that. But what I really love about this sampler is this bottom section of this floral basket that would be a total standalone design all on its own if you didn't want to stitch the whole sampler and I just love that would be so much fun to stitch and I I'm a real fan of those colors of that steely blue and the brown together that just appeals to me really yeah yes and I was looking at this one a week ago and the reason why, just a little bit of trivia, I have my one daughter getting married this summer. She changed her wedding sampler that I'm, or wedding picture for me to stitch. This is one I had showed to her. Now she didn't pick it, but I think this is another one that would be really good for a wedding or an anniversary sampler. No, it has the couple in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. And it the, is a larger. The verse reads, let love reign in your heart and home. So wedding, heart or housewarming. And you can pull motifs out. You can use that. You can make a drum. That bouquet of flowers itself would be outstanding. And yes, the colors are very soothing. So, yep. She did a good run on that one. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. the last one that's on my list is the one that's just so close to our traditional stitches heart. And that is that Alma at Blackbird Designs has decided to release our What Remains is Love chart at Nashville. So, uh, we're, so many people missed out on it when it was our exclusive. Um, and now all of those people are going to be able to um, join us in it again. Mm -hmm. So we're glad to be able to offer it still. Good. So that's very exciting. So I'll insert our photo of that here as well. And invite everybody to, um, I'll link all of the ones that Rose and I have specifically mentioned below, um, but also the, the main link that you want to go to is just our Nashville previews page on our website, where you can see and page through everything. And, um, like make yourself a pot of tea, not just a cup of tea, but a pot of tea so that you can take the time to go through each and look at how wonderful they are. And we could talk about the merits of every single design because they're just awesome. Yeah, You're right. So I've placed lots of advanced orders and you can see my uh, duffel bags on the bed behind me. I'm starting to pack and collect and that's going to be this weekend's job is to make sure that I've got all my duckies in a row that way. 
and then we're just going to go have fun. I need to pack a bottle of wine and... Uh, <laughs> Well, the hotel that we're staying at is about a 45 minute drive out of Nashville proper in kind of a suburb. And uh, the hotel itself is in kind of a, um, like an industrial commercial area. So there's not a whole lot of things to walk to. So I phone the hotel to ask them, you know, a little bit about what they're doing with COVID and particularly for international travelers that need to um, make testing arrangements and stuff. And so they're far, far enough off the beaten path that they haven't really encountered very much of that. Um, so um, the guy I talked to at the hotel said that, well, COVID's not really a thing here anymore. But then he went on to say that uh, our airport, our hotel shuttle is closed due to COVID. And then we got an email a couple of days ago saying that the restaurant is closed due to COVID. And I'm thinking oh. that both of those things is actually more to do with uh, staffing shortages. We know, oh. we know what a challenge that is. And yeah. so they're doing some buffet food and stuff in the hotel instead of the sit down restaurant. So I can see how that would be helpful for them if they're having a hard time that way. But yeah. so there'll be some ordering in happening and yeah, but we're just going to roll with it. But we do need wine. Jean and Kathy and I <laughs> definitely need our wine. So I'll be bringing a bottle of Canadian red wine in my luggage with me. There we go. Yeah. So bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then I had to pick my airplane project. And um, I don't have the chart here. That was short sighted of me, but I'll insert a picture of it. Um, it is Silver Creek Sampler's Pour Favor design, which 28 count linen, two strands of thread, and just the perfect thing. Not very many color changes. So perfect for airplane stitching. Good. So. Good. So what else have you got going on, Rose? I, well, this week was a finishing week. I did a lot of, well, I did three frames, three framing pieces, so they're done. I learned a lot with one of them with framing. And then I've got a couple of whips that I'm working on at the moment. Um, so I'm working on Needles Dance. And that's a collaboration between, you've done it before, yeah. between Hands on Design, Ink Circles, and Summer House Stitchworks. Yeah. So here's the piece. Mm -hmm. And this is just my hour in the morning, coffee and cross stitch, as I call it. So, so there is that. So, and then I'm working on, and this will be put aside, but I'm working on from the exemplary, exemplary, Joanne Harvey, the Margaret Hodden sampler. Mm. And she's coming along quite well. I must have a thing about Wichelt linen because these are both on Wichelt. Oh. Which I don't mind. And that's what I've got so far. Yeah. Well, so. there's so much going on in that sampler that you don't necessarily need a hand dyed fabric. No, I would never. I really like the fabric that it's on. To me, it's kind of a historical fabric. It suits it. Hmm. And then next week, I will be starting two other stitch alongs. Well, not starting, continuing two other stitch alongs. One is the Jeanette Douglas, the mini bouquet sample for Sal. And the other is Rose Ada Featherstone from Hands Across the Sea, which was an exclusive through Hobby House Needleworks. So those are what I'm presently going to be working on as the week progresses, so. Mm, exciting. Yeah. Good. So. Hmm. Well, Kim and I might have to do a quick video at some point of our Nashville experience when we actually have the physical things to hold up and show everybody. So there you, we might do a short video in between now and when you and I meet again for the next section in our uh, Esther Blackwood stitch along in a month's time. Exactly. That would be a good idea. I think you guys should. Yeah. 
Yeah, it would be fun. Totally unscripted. She's yeah. crazy like me, so. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. You're going to go have a dog walk because we have a mild day today, yeah. you said. Yeah. I have a little bit of kitchen duty to do, as in cooking, but that's okay. I have soup and bread to make and dog to walk and lemon curd to make. And Oh, that uh, sounds like a lovely Saturday. It does. It does. Somebody over here is doing taxes, so. Oh. Yeah. Necessary evil. I just took a peek and he's like this with his hand is like, oh dear. <laughs> that can't be good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll talk to you soon, Rose. Safe travels. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.